So this is um, for integrated two, uh, chapter two, homework 27 through 32. So we're practicing writing more converses and deciding if they are true or false. So the original statement was, if it rains, then the ground is wet. So if we're gonna do the converse, the converse is going to be the following. If the ground is wet, because we're gonna take this part, if the ground is wet, Then, and then I'm gonna take this part here. It is raining. And is this definitely true? Is there any situation where the ground could be wet and it's not raining? So I'm gonna answer that this is not true. And a counter example or an example would be um, sprinklers. Could it have sprinklers on. And the sprinklers could have gotten the ground wet. On letter B, if a polygon is a square, then it is a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to be switching that with that. So if a polygon is a rectangle, so we're gonna use the word polygon because we're talking about a type of shape. So if a polygon is a rectangle, then, um, a, then it is a square. So in the first situation, squares are rectangles, but are all rectangles a square? No, not necessarily. So this is not true, not true. Uh, not all rectangles are squares. And I can come over here and grab the rectangle drawer. And that is a rectangle, but that definitely is not a square. Okay, um, next one. If a polygon is a rectangle, then it has four 90 degree angles. So, if a polygon has four 90 degree angles, then it is a rectangle. So if a polygon has four 90 degree angles, then it is a rectangle. Now for this, you might want to say, yes, it's true because a rectangle does have four 90 degree angles, but I'm gonna say this is not true because it didn't say that um, it only had four 90 degree angles. It could have more angles. So not true could have more than four angles. And that would make it definitely not a rectangle. Um, the next one, if a polygon has three angles, then it is a triangle. So um, if a polygon is a triangle, then it has three angles. And this one I would say is true. 
this one is true. On the last one of these, if two lines intersect, then vertical angles are congruent. So if vertical angles are congruent, then two lines intersect. And that is also going to be true because that's how we form vertical angles. We have two lines intersecting, they form the vertical angles and those vertical angles are congruent. So that is going to be true. Okay, next section. Um, we're solving for X and we want to look and see if we notice anything. So uh, something that there's different ways you can go about doing this. If I was looking at this triangle right here, okay, this triangle. So I know the angles in a triangle have to add to 180 degrees. So in this situation, I basically have 180 minus 35 minus 75. And when I take 180 minus 35 minus 75, I end up getting 70 degrees. So this is going to be 70 degrees. Now, if I add these two angles together, Okay, so this up here was because of triangle angle sum. This is because these are a linear pair. They have to add to 180. So basically, I know if I take 180 minus 70, I'm going to get 110 degrees. So that X is going to be 110 degrees. Now, in this next situation, I again have a triangle. Um, in this triangle, I have an isosceles triangle. So what that's going to mean, because I have this side and this side being the same, that these two base angles, this one here and this one here, have to be the same. So I know that both of them um, are going to be x. Now, I know that this angle and this angle are going to be a linear pair. So I know if I take 180 minus 140, I'm going to get this angle, which is going to be 40 degrees. I also know that in this triangle, if I have my 40 and let's say 2x, okay, the two x's together, they need to add to 180 degrees because of triangle angle sum theorem. So I'm gonna get 2x is equal to 140, so x is equal to 70. So that means that this is 70 and this is 70. Um, in this next situation, I again know I have a linear pair. So if I go 180 minus 148, um, I am going to get 32. So I know that this here is going to be 32. And again, because I have a linear pair. Now in the triangle here, okay, in this triangle, I know that the angles in here need to add to 180. So I know if I take 180, if I take 180 minus 100, 
which is going to be 80, minus 32, that is going to give me my x. And so 180 minus 100 minus 32, I end up with 48 for my x. So this is 48. And again, that was because of triangle angle sum. Now, in this next situation, I again have a triangle. And in that triangle, this is also going to be an isosceles triangle. They didn't show me the sides, but they showed me the angles. So I know that if I take um, 180 degrees minus 36, here, let me do it like this. Um, 180 is going to equal 36 plus, let's say, 2x. So 180 minus 36 is going to leave me with 144. So I'm basically going to get 144 is equal to 2x. And when I divide by 2, I'm going to end up with my x being a 72. So each of these is going to be 72. Now, I know that this angle and this angle are a linear pair, and they have to add to 180. So if I take 180 minus 72, that is going to give me my x. And when I take 180 minus 72, I end up with... 108. So this is going to be 108. Okay, so now after solving for x in the diagrams in problems 2 28, Jerome thinks he sees a pattern. He notices that the measure of an exterior angle the angle formed by extending a side of a triangle is related to the two angles of the triangle. Do you see the pattern? So let's take a look here. So what I'm looking at is um, the relationship between this angle and these two here. So this angle is 110. Here I have a 35 and a 75. Now my 35 plus 75 does equal 110. Sorry, I started to write 180. Let me get a pen that's not vanishing for a second. So if I am looking at this X, and I'm looking at the 75 and this 35, okay? X was equal to, X was equal to um, 110. And my 35 and my 75 together also equal 110. Over here, if I'm looking at my 140, and then I'm looking at these two angles here. So my angle here was 140, and then my two angles, 70 and 70, my two remote ones did end up adding to 140. Um, if I'm looking at this 148, and then I'm looking at this angle and this angle, my 48 and my 100 add to 148. If I look at this 108, and I look at this one and this one, so I'm going to take a 72 and a 36 and add those up. 
I am going to get a 108. So in each of these situations, if I take the exterior angle and in the triangle, I take the two furthest angles, not the one that's next to it, these together add up to the same thing as this. And it makes sense because this X and this, this angle 70 here have to add to 180 because they form a line. But these two also have to add with the 70 to get a 180 because they form a triangle. So if this has to add with 70 to get 180 and these have to add with 70 to also get 180, it makes sense that these two will be the same as this. Okay, so that's what they want us to notice here. So in this situation, if I have a triangle, let's say I have this angle X and let's call this one A, B, and C, okay? So this angle X is going to be our X, exterior angle and this angle B and C are going to be our remote interior angles since X is going to add with A to B 180 Okay, because together they make a line. Okay, and my B and C are also going to add with A to get to B 180 because they form this triangle together. So that's why they're going to add to 180 then what has to be true is this X and this B plus C have to be the same. So X is going to equal the sum of B plus C. The exterior angle is going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles. So in this example, let me just kind of move this out of the way. And let me see if I can move this. Okay. So in the example at the right, angles A and B are called the remote angles of, I use different letters up here, I apologize. Um, I wasn't looking at the picture here. The remote interior angles uh, of the given, are called the remote interior angles of the given exterior angle because they are not adjacent to, okay? C is next to, these ones are not next to, so they're the remote interior. So write a conjecture between the measures of the angles, the interior angles and the exterior angles. Okay, the measure, the measure of the, exterior angle and I'll call it X is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles And I'm going to call that angle A and angle B. 
So in this case, x is going to equal a plus b. Proof that the conjecture wrote in part b is true for all triangles. Your proof can be written in any form as long as it's convincing and provides reasons for all statements. Okay, so um, for this, I'm going to be using the diagram that they have there. And so the first thing I'm going to say is that a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason I'm going to say is triangle angle sum theorem. I am also going to say that x plus c is equal to 180 degrees. And I'm going to say that because definition of linear pair. Um, and then what I'm going to say is the following. This and this are going to lead to me saying the following statement. Since a plus b plus c equals 180 and x plus c also equals 180, I am going to say that a plus b plus c has to equal x plus c. And the reason I'm going to say that is substitution. And then the next thing I'm going to say is that that is going to lead to a plus b is equal to c, not c, sorry, x, I apologize. And that is by subtraction property. I'm allowed to subtract from both sides. And then I've made the proof. 2-30, um, they want us to plot these and then solve it algebraically. So I am going to graph the first one, let's say in orange. So my y-intercept is going to be one. My slope is a negative one, which means I'm gonna go down one over one. And since I'm trying to find the point of intersection by graphing, I wanna be accurate. So I'm gonna continue doing my slope in both directions so I can be consistent with my graph. And then I'm gonna grab the line, change the color, okay? And I'm gonna draw my line through this. Just that part a little bit. You can always kind of grab the ends and adjust. And there's that line. Now let me do the other one in, let's say this purple color. So I'm gonna start at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has a slope of two, so up two over one. And then I'm gonna continue going down to left one. You see it meets right there. And let me get my line. And then if I'm trying to see where they cross, they cross at this point here, which is gonna be negative two comma one, two, three negative two comma three, you need to write the point of intersection. Okay, you need to write the coordinates. That would, that's what they want us to find. That's the solution. Now, if I'm gonna solve this algebraically, I'm gonna use the equal values method. Since both of them equal y, I can set my negative x plus one 
equal to my 2x plus 7 and solve. So when I uh, solve this, I'm going to get 1 is equal to 3x plus 7. I'm going to minus 7, get negative 6 is equal to 3x. So negative 2 is equal to x. So I know I'm going to have negative 2 comma something. Now to find the something, I'm going to take that value and plug it into either uh, problem. So if I'm going to plug it into negative x plus 1, it's going to be a negative, negative 2 plus 1. That's a 2 plus 1 or 3. And that's my point of intersection. Now on 2-31, Um, I need to decide if these are congruent and justify the reasoning. So the reasons I would give would be side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or hypotenuse like. So first off, these both have 90 degree angle. So they both have the, the 90 degree angle. Um, both of these have this side here that's 8, okay, this side here that's 8. Now I need to see if there's anything else that they both have. Now looking at this, this right here is 6. And so I know if I draw this triangle out, right now I have a six here and eight here, and I can do Pythagorean to find the hypotenuse. So I go six squared plus eight squared equals, let's say C squared. Um, 36 plus 64 equals c squared. So I'm going to get 100 is equal to c squared, or the square root of 100 is 10. So this is going to be 10. Some of us might recognize this as a 6, 8, 10, or 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So this side here is going to be 10. Okay. Now, if I look at this triangle right here, this triangle right here, that triangle has the eight as a leg, like the other triangle does, okay? Like this uh, green triangle does, okay? To kind of color code these. And then this side here, of this is going to be a 6 plus a 4, so that is going to be 10. So I have hypotenuse leg if I'm using the, the 8 and the 6. Some of us might also have given me side angle side if you found the 6 here. Um, now, on letter B, I have an angle, I have another angle, and I have this side here, and this side here. So that is going to be congruent, it's going to be congruent by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. It's not angle, side, angle, because I have this angle, I have the side, but I don't know that angle. That would have been angle, side, angle. Um, on C, I have this side that they both share by reflexive property. I have this here, and I have this here, so they both have that. 
Now they both have this angle. So at first it looks like they would be the same, but I have to be careful because in this triangle, let's say this blue triangle here versus this purple triangle here, in the blue triangle, I would have angle side side, which is not a congruency. Um, and in the other one, I would also have angle side side. Now, in both cases, the angles are not in the right spot. But again, side side angle is not congruent. Okay, so that's not going to be congruent. The things are not in the same spot either. Um, for the next one, I do have this that they share. So they share this side. And I have this side in this triangle, and I have this side in this triangle, and I have the angle in between the blue and the red, and I have in between the blue and the red. So this is going to be congruent by side angle side. And diamond problems. So remember the top we're trying to multiply, the bottom we're trying to add. So this is gonna be a 28 and a negative 11. I want to multiply to a negative 12 and add to a four. So that's gonna be a six and a negative two. I need it to multiply to a negative eight. So half of what gives me negative eight, well, that's gonna be a negative 16. And then when I add these, oops, I am going to get, when I add these, a negative 15 and a half. Now I am gonna multiply these fractions. When I multiply fractions, top with top, bottom with bottom, so that's gonna be a 1 -tenth. Now, when I add them, I need common denominators. So if I have a one half plus a one fifth, my common denominator is going to be 10. So the first one I would multiply top and bottom by five and I get a five tenths. The second one I multiply top and bottom by two and I get a two tenths. And so my final answer is going to be seven tenths.